So I've got Lightroom here. I use it for my photo editing, a lot of my photo editing. It's really useful for being able to catalog everything. So it's really good for organizing photos. And I can put them into collections and albums and then be able to share them with people, which is really useful. They can then download those photos if I want them to. And if I've got other devices such as my iPhone or iPad, and this works on other smartphones as well that allow you to put Lightroom on there, then it will synchronize with them. And if you make changes on there, they will then change here as well. But it's really great because then you've got your portfolio wherever you go. So I've got some photos here and I want to show you how to create a collection. Now this is Lightroom Classic. I'm going to show you on here, but I'm also going to do it for Lightroom as well, which is the other version that they have as well. It's slightly different in there. So I've got some pictures here. I've just got these pictures. I'm in my develop module, but it doesn't matter whether I'm in develop or in library here. So if I was to click on library, I can just come back to here and do the same thing. I work a lot in develop, so let's just stick with this. And I've got my photos down at the bottom here. Now I need to choose them and then create a collection. So what I'm going to do is I've got this first one selected here. Now, if I wanted this one and all the way through to number four, I could hold down the shift key and then click on number four and it will highlight all of those in between. So I've still got the shift key down and you can see it's selecting those. I'm gonna let go of the shift key. By the way, if I wanted to deselect all of those and just select any of them, just in the gray area around it, I can just select one of them. If I want to select say this one here, number one, number three, and maybe number six. I can hold down either the control in Windows or command in the Mac, and then I can just choose them like that. And again, to deselect, I can just select something else. If I want all of them, control A or command A on the Mac selects all of them. And I'm going to select all of them. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to go to my collections here. You can see it here and there's a little plus sign on the side. New collection, it's popping up there. I'm going to click on it and choose create collection. Let's just do that. Let's just do this as collection tutorial. Oh, let's get the typing right here. Because if I'd practice that bit, and I've got include selected photos, obviously I want those, and I've got sync with Lightroom. So you do need an account and you should be logged in. And you can see at the top here on the top left hand side, I'm logged in. So that's a good thing. So I'm just gonna click on create. Okay, so I've scrolled down to where my collection tutorial is and you can see that it's got this double headed arrow there telling me that it's syncing. And you can see it says click to stop syncing this collection with Lightroom. If I click on it, it comes up with stop syncing. Unless of course you've turned this don't show again on. I'm not gonna do that. I'm going to cancel it. But if I did, it would get rid of it and it'd be the same as the one above, which you can see that if I move over it, it's just a square at the moment, it becomes a double arrow like that. If I click on it, it will then start syncing. Let's click on it, stop it, and stop syncing. So you can see that with the, when I want it to stop, it gave me a warning, unless of course I had that switched off. So that's now syncing up. How do I share it? Well, there's a couple of ways you can do this. One, I could do this just by right clicking here. If you're using a Mac, you can do control click if you haven't got the right click set up. And you'll see it's got Lightroom links. Now if I want to share it, I'm going to make this collection public. I could view this on the web, but we're gonna to go to that in a moment. I'm gonna make it public because you need it to be public to share it. So I'm doing that. Now it could take a moment, but I'm just going to right click again. Let's go to Lightroom links. Now let's just wait a moment. It's trying to catch up with me here. Okay, so let's just try that again. Let's just right click, go to Lightroom links, and there you have it. I could view it on the web. If I did that, it would take me to my default browser. I can copy the public link, and if I do that, I'll then be able to send it on to people. So if I click on that, I've got a message here telling me that it's done, it's disappeared. And then I could paste it into an email, text, WhatsApp, you name it.
I'm just going to go to my browser. I'm using Safari here, so let's go to this, but it doesn't really matter. And here it is. Here is my collection tutorial, and you can see it here. And I could click on it, move through it in exactly the same way that I would if I was seeing this, say, in Lightroom itself. Now, I did share it, but I couldn't do this on the Lightroom Classic version, but I can do this on the... Now in Lightroom Classic, I didn't have some options there when I right click to do things like allow people to download. But here on the website, if I go to my Share Settings button over here, which is in the top right, if I click on it, you can see I've got more options. So Copy Link is one of them and I can choose who can view it, so it could be invite only. And I have things under the settings as well, so if I go to settings, I can choose things such as downloads. And I could then click done. Now let me just click back on my share settings again, because here I've got invite only, and with that, I need to put some emails in. And what you do is you type in someone's email at email.com, I'm making it up, and you now have that they can view, they can contribute, so that means that they could make uh, other things, they could add into it as well, or they could edit the pictures if you wanted them to. I'm going to have it as just view, invite, bang, we'll send them an email to do that. If I want to get rid of them, I can just click here on the right and choose remove. If I want to stop sharing this at any point, if I go back to Lightroom, I can now right click Lightroom links and I could go back to making the collection private. Back on the website, I can do the same thing. I can stop sharing just by going into my share settings, stop sharing. If I do that, that will stop it. So whilst I'm here, I can now actually go to here and you can see that I can get shareable link. Because I'd shared it before, that wasn't there. So if I do that, I can now copy that link. And these are happening, if I make a change here, it's happening as well on the other site. So I did make this so that people could download, just so you know, they're high quality images, assuming your images started up being high quality, and they're medium res. So if someone wants to download them, the resolution is good enough it's very good, in fact, for using on the web and things like that. So if you want to use it for social media, it's absolutely perfect. Now, let's just go to Lightroom as opposed to Lightroom Classic. Okay, so I'm here now in this one, and this is actually a lot like the web, and this works the same way on the iPad as well. So what I've got here is you'll notice I've got in the top right-hand corner my share settings. So once again, I can click there. You can see it's picking it up exactly the same settings that I had from both Lightroom Classic and here. So if you're using both of them, they're in sync with each other. So it's kind of handy to have this. To copy this link here, I can just click on here on that copy. And you can see I've got the same kind of settings that I had when I looked at it on the web. And if you do this, as I said, if you do this particularly on your iPad, it looks a lot like this. You can also do this on your iPhone as well, do the share and invite. So if I click on done, that's done there. So you can see here, there it says collection tutorial, there it is. And I can right click and choose share and invite. That also brings me into this as well. So there's more than one way to do it. If you were doing this on the iPad, you would see three dots next to it there as opposed to having a right click and you could just tap on that and then open it and do exactly the same kind of thing. So there you have it. That's how you can create a collection or an album. In the Lightroom here, it's called albums as opposed to collections, but they're in sync with each other. And in fact, if I make changes here, they happen over there. Let's just actually do that just so that you can see. So let's take this. Let me drop the exposure right down on here. If I go to the web page and refresh, you'll see it's done. And if I go to Lightroom Classic, it's taken a moment, but it's updated there as well. And it will update on any of your other devices as well. So if you do this and you think you want to see how it looks on your phone, because that's how people are going to be looking at it, then this is a good way of editing it on those devices as well. 
So just a couple of last things to show you. Although I created the collection and put the photos into it, I can still add to it. So I can just click and drag something in. So I'm back here on my library and I can take it from any folder. So these can come from all sorts of sources. Um, so you might be creating a showcase. So all you have to do is click and drag and it drops it in there. You can see there's seven in there at the moment. If I click on it, it's got eight. And if I click on it as well, if I want to get rid of any, I can either do it here, I can right click and I can just choose remove from collection. I could do it down here as well, right click and remove from collection. And if I'm in Lightroom, so the other thing I can do is right click here and remove photo from album. So I can also do it there as well. If I'm doing it on the browser, if I float over a picture, you'll see this little square in the corner, click on it, you can select others and then you can remove. It doesn't delete it. Unlike delete, use remove. That still keeps it there. It doesn't get rid of it permanently. So remove is better than delete unless you really, really, really want to get rid of it. So that's how you can add and remove as well. And one other thing about this is it's really useful because it acts as a backup as well for your photos by creating albums or collections. If you do like this, please do like, share and subscribe and come back for more.